here's more that we, the American people, now know, thanks to this new book from Jeffrey Berman. Quote, while Michael Cohen pled guilty, our office continued to pursue investigations related to other possible campaign finance violations. When Bill Barr took over as U.S. Attorney General in February 2019, six months after Cohen's guilty plea, he not only tried to kill the ongoing investigations we were engaged in, but incredibly, he suggested that Cohen's conviction on campaign finance charges should be reversed. Barr summoned my deputy, Rob Kuzami, who was overseeing the Cohen case, in late February to challenge the basis of Cohen's plea, as well as the reasoning behind pursuing similar campaign finance charges against other individuals. Kuzami was told to cease all investigative work on the campaign finance allegations until Maine Justice determined there was a legal basis for the campaign finance charges to which Cohen pled guilty, and until Barr determined there was a sufficient federal interest in pursuing charges against others. The directive Bill Barr gave my deputy, Rob Kuzami, which was amplified that same day by a follow-up call from Edward O'Callaghan, that directive was explicit. Not a single investigative step could be taken. Not a single document in our possession could be reviewed. And if Maine Justice decided in the end that there was no legal basis for the charges, well, the Attorney General of the United States would then direct us to dismiss the campaign finance guilty pleas of Michael Cohen, the man who implicated the Attorney General's boss, the president. Barr's posture here raises obvious questions, Berman writes. Did he think dropping the campaign finance charges would bolster Trump's defense against impeachment charges? Was he trying to ensure that no other Trump associates or employees would be charged with making hush money payments or perhaps flip on the president? Was the goal to ensure that the president could not be charged after leaving office? Was it part of an effort to undo the entire series of investigations and prosecutions over the past two years of those in the president's orbit? Michael Cohen, Roger Stone, Michael Flynn. As U.S. Attorney at SDNY, Jeff Berman says he was told by Trump appointees to bring a prosecution against President Obama's White House counsel, despite the fact that that man had committed no crime. Trump's attorney general also told Berman's office to stop investigating anybody else who was involved in the campaign finance felonies that put the president's lawyer in prison, campaign finance felonies that directly involved the president himself and were committed for his benefit. They also tried to undo Michael Cohen's guilty plea. They did not succeed in that, but they did delay by months any further investigation into other people involved in Cohen's crimes. And that's not it. Look at, look at this from Berman's new book. Trump's Justice Department tells SDNY not only that they want to evaluate the basis of Cohen's plea, and they want SDNY to stop investigating anybody else who might have been involved in those crimes committed by the Trump campaign to try to cover up evidence of alleged affairs. SDNY also contacted, was also contacted by Trump's Justice Department senior officials, and they were told that they needed to get rid of all mentions of individual one in the Michael Cohen indictment. SDNY said no to that. They resisted. But SDNY officials did take out of the Michael Cohen-related court filings the most direct language they'd had in those filings saying what role Trump played in those crimes. Here's how Berman describes it. Quote, Maine justice interfered when the information was being finalized. After Michael Cohen agreed to plead guilty, the charging instrument for him became an information rather than an indictment. Berman says, quote, it was about 40 pages long, and it referenced a person identified as Individual One as having acted in concert with Cohen. There was zero doubt as to the identity of Individual One. It was Donald J. Trump. After SDNY sent the indictment, the information, to Maine Justice, quote, the next day, Robert Kuzami, my deputy who was overseeing the case, received a call from Edward O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan was aggressive. Why the length, he wanted to know. He argued that now that Cohen was pleading guilty, we don't need all this description. Kuzami responded, what exactly are you concerned about? O'Callaghan proceeded to identify specific allegations he wanted removed, almost all of which referenced individual one, Donald Trump. It quickly became apparent to Kuzami that contrary to what O'Callaghan professed, it wasn't the overall length or the detail of the document that concerned him. It was any mention of individual one. 
Kazami and O'Callaghan went through a handful of these allegations, some of which Kazami agreed to strike, others he did not. Sensing that this was going to be a long and adversarial process, Kuzami told O'Callaghan that he was now aware of O'Callaghan's concerns and the team would redraft the information and remove certain non-essential details. The team was tasked with the rewrite. They stayed up most of the night. The revised information in Cohen's case was now 21 pages, down from 40. It removed certain allegations, including allegations that Individual 1 acted in concert with and coordinated with Cohen on the illegal campaign contributions. The information now alleged that Cohen acted in concert and coordinated with, quote, one or more members of the campaign. So individual one, Donald Trump, he did this stuff with Donald Trump becomes, he did this stuff with someone from the campaign. The specific mentions of Cohen committing this crime, this federal felony, in concert with and coordinating with Trump in the commission of the crime, those specific references were taken out of this court filing to not mention Trump specifically. And the investigators in that case were also directed by Maine Justice that they needed to stop investigating anybody other than Michael Cohen for these crimes. And that delay lasted for months. So now we know, right? I mean, Michael Cohen kept saying in public, why am I the only person getting in trouble for this? It's not like I did it for myself. It's not like I did it alone. 